In this video we'll explore inventory simulation optimization. Now simulation is a really important word as it is key to a much better approach to optimizing your supply chain's inventory policies. Let's take a look at the advantages of inventory simulation optimization over the more traditional approaches. So the traditional inventory optimization approach used abstracted very aggregated demand, lead times and capacities. So this didn't really represent the reality of things like demand variability. And this leads to inaccuracies and really unactionable results. So things like overstock, service failures, lost profit. Ultimately, you are just not able to truly evaluate how those changes to your inventory policies will impact how your supply chain performs. Inventory simulation optimization removes these abstractions and considers real world variability. This allows you to trade off cost and service, providing accurate granular time series data that allows you to truly evaluate inventory performance and generate actionable results that can be implemented with confidence. Now let's take a look at how ISO works at the high level. Based on ranges for input policies, ISO will generate many scenarios. As we are a true SaaS platform, all of these scenarios will run in parallel. We like to call it hyperscaling, which is a key enabler to this better approach. Based on fitness data that you can define, good scenarios are identified. ISO then evolves the input policies for these good scenarios and generates many more scenarios and it will run those in parallel. It will repeat this for a defined number of cycles. You can then select the best solutions and fully simulate the policies to evaluate exactly how your supply chain will perform. So now let's jump into Cosmic Frog and take a look at the model. We can see the products being manufactured in Los Angeles and St. Louis. And that manufactured product has been moved through three distribution centers in Phoenix, Arizona, Chicago, Illinois, and Richmond, Virginia. And then that product is servicing customers. We've got three products in this model and we can see the flows from manufacture through the distribution facilities out to those customers. This is an order driven discrete event simulation model. And we can see here the customer order profiles against which order events will be generated for each customer and each product. Inventory is also held at both the manufacturing sites and the distribution centers. So we're holding inventory at two echelons. And we can see here, these are the inventory policies for each of those sites and those products. So now we'll take a look at the output factors table. And this is where we define what a good solution looks like, which will guide ISO when evaluating and generating better scenarios. We use what we call utility curves to guide ISO. We create a utility curve for each KPI, for example, cost or service, that's of interest. We can then generate a value between one and 100 based on measuring that KPI. Utility curves can have many different shapes that can represent many ways to grade a KPI. So let's take this example on the right. We can see for the cost KPI that for a high cost, we get a low score. So what we're saying is as the cost gets lower, the better the utility score gets. So the lower the cost, the better and stronger the solution. Conversely, we can then look at service. So the lower the service level, the lower the score. And as that service level gets higher, we can see that the utility score is higher. And as ISO is generating different solutions, it's looking to get to a point where it has a score driven by the lowest cost and the highest service level. So let's take a look at how we can implement that utility curve. So we can see that we're firstly looking at service and we can define for the utility curve which column and which table we want to apply it to. So in this example, we're applying it to the total placement of customer order quantity that's on time and in full. And here we're saying that if the service is below 70%, it gets a score of zero. Anything between 70 and 98% is a linear increase. And then anything from 98% to 100% gets a score of 100. So this means we're really shooting for that 98% service level. And then for total inventory holding cost, we can see that that's linear, where 215,000 scores zero and 50,000 scores 100. 
Now within the scope of this model, we're looking at inventory across multiple echelons in the network. So we're defining utility curves for service and cost. But we can add as many rows as we want to this table and we can select any data in any column against any table and be able to fit utility curves, which will guide the genetic algorithm to find better solutions. So this has huge application beyond just the use case of multi-echelon inventory that we're looking at here. Now we're going to go back and take another look at inputs. And we can see we're in the inventory policies table and we filtered down to look at the Illinois DC just for product two. And we can see that the inventory policy there is safety stock. So it's a min max policy. And we can see that this is the value for the minimum. If we go below this value, then we'll be reordering and then we'll reorder up to the max, which is 800. So the reorder point is defined in simulation policy value one, and the order up to point is defined in simulation policy value two. In the input factors table, we are able to define the solution space we want to explore. ISO will update inventory policies between these ranges when generating and exploring scenarios. So we can see that for the inventory policies table, simulation policy value one, which for Illinois product two is the reorder point, the minimum for the safety stock policy. We can explore between a value of seven and 900 in incremental steps of 10. And then for the same table, but for the simulation policy value two. So this is the maximum order up to level for Illinois product two, we're able to explore between 900 and 1100, again in incremental steps of 10. Let's take another look at this on a slide. So every time ISO generates a new scenario, it will be updating the inventory policies table. And simulation policy value one, which in this example represents the minimum reorder point at which an order is generated, a value will be generated between 700 and 900. And we can see in this example, it could be 720. Again, simulation policy value two in the inventory policies table will have a number generated between 900 and 1100. And this represents the maximum order up to point that the replenishment will fulfill. And in this example, that number is 940. So now we've defined the solution space to explore in input factors. And we've also defined what good looks like and what should be guiding to the best result in the output factors table we're ready to run. So we can simply click the run button. We can select inventory optimization as the engine we want to run. And here we'll be just starting with the baseline and then many scenarios will be automatically generated by ISO from that baseline scenario. And if we go to run manager, we can see many scenarios that have been automatically generated by ISO and they're all running in parallel on Oplogix platform. So now ISO has finished running we can see that every single one of these dots is a scenario that was generated and simulated. And then we can see the scenarios were getting better in terms of inventory cost becoming lower and service becoming higher as ISO continued to generate more scenarios that were continuously improving. So we can see we've got some interesting scenarios down here. 18.17 is actually got the best service level, nearly 98%. But we have another scenario, 20.17, where the service is very comparable and the inventory cost is lower. So now to be able to really understand how these inventory policies perform, we want to fully simulate both of these scenarios and get all of the event data out. So we can do that very easily by selecting them. ISO as it's automatically generated scenarios, it's kept the best ones. It's kept the ones that are higher service and lowest cost. So we can select those two pre-generated scenarios. And then we can select the full simulation engine and we can run both of those in parallel. And now we can really start to understand how those inventory policies perform within our supply chain. So we can see here, this is the event data. This is time series data for inventory in the baseline. And this is for product one across all facilities. We could drill in further and we could look at the DC in Virginia. And we can see here that Although product would have been in other facilities, we've actually got some stock outs and this is what the profile looks like for that facility. And then we've also got that for the other scenarios that we've simulated. So here, if we take 20.17, 
This gave us nearly a 98% service level and was our lowest cost solution. We can easily compare those two inventory profiles and we can actually see that we've got inventory in that scenario where previously we'd have stocked out in the baseline. And this is what's driving that increase in service level. So in this model, we've used inventory simulation optimization to define optimal inventory policies. We've used detailed stochastic demand that much better represents reality. We've been able to explore the trade-offs between cost and service with many hundreds of simulations. This has provided us with accurate and detailed service level information, as well as financials. And then we've really been able to model the granularity down to the events and look at the time series to be able to truly understand how our new inventory policies will perform within our supply chain.